so after that, after my birthday, May 31st, May 30th, I left and I went to visit Kenya, who is a co-founder of Black Minimalist, and she's also my friend. I met Kenya via my site, so she bought um, a Live Simply and Be Free ebook, the first version of it. I actually had the second version of it up now for sale on my website um i updated it and changed the design and all of that so you can go purchase a copy of it and i'll have information about it at the end of this video but yeah it's up on my site for 9.95 get you a copy start your minimalist journey start your minimalist journey and get free so yeah i went to visit her in charleston south carolina and we hung out and we had a good time, but it was definitely a milestone or like a marking point in my spiritual journey because just some weird shit was happening. I mean, good shit, but weird shit. So on our journey, and I, I have videos coming for um, my, my six months in Mexico. I have videos for that coming and I have videos for um, my visit to Kenya and Charleston. So, don't worry about that. But anyway, while we were there, we explored Charleston, which I had been to Charleston once before. So I was excited to come back and see how much it had changed. Um, and see other parts of Charleston that I didn't get to see when I was there the first time. So we did that. We went to Savannah. On our way to Savannah, we actually found the African village of Oyotunje, which is in or near Yam Yam Yamasi, South Carolina. Yamasee, Yamasee, it's an indigenous name. It's in between, basically it's in between um, Charleston and Savannah. So we just we were just driving down the highway and I saw the sign, I'm like, whoa, look at that. Cause I've, I've heard of Oyotunje before, but I didn't know exactly where it was located. So we went there, um, vied with them, learned a little bit about the history of Oyotunje and like that's what like set it off. And Another thing that's really was special about this trip is that like we decided not to put anything like set in stone, like not have a schedule and say, oh, we got to be here by this time, there by that time. Um, we really wanted to go with the flow and just honor our time and like rest and like chill. So um, we kicked it at OU J and that's when the vibe started kicking off um, there. Then when we got to Savannah, we weren't sure what to do, but I knew about, I had heard about Sankofa House. Of Savannah um, randomly I found a post from someone on Instagram someone that I follow and I was like well if we go to Savannah and we have time you know maybe we can check this place out so we go there and this is like it's like five o'clock after five and we did unbeknownst to us um, it was about to close at like six so we got there like right before six and one of the owners the owner um, or the founder of Savannah House. She was about to leave, but when we got there, she stayed. And you know, they talked to us about Sankofa House, and um, we were there for like two hours. And like the vibes just kept getting like stronger and stronger. Lots of energy. And that night, I had like crazy, crazy dreams. Like I didn't get hardly any sleep. Definitely lucid dreaming, in and out consciousness. Like making noises and things in my sleep moving around like i was exhausted um but yeah good Sanko, if you're ever in savannah go visit the sankofa house and get you some spiritual healing so we ended up going back to sankofa house the next day we took them an offering um and we went back to oyotunje because they were having their egun, egun, egun festival and egun means ancestor um, and Sankofa, I, it, I think it means to reach back, but it's also, you know, about, you know, honoring your ancestors and remembering where you came from. So we went to the Egungu Festival. We weren't able to stay for the whole thing, um, but we got a tour of parts, some parts of the village, and we got to see a little bit of the, like, opening ceremony or opening dance of the Egungu. And then we went to Atlanta and we had a meet up with some of our black minimalist family in Atlanta. We ate a soul vegetarian, which was very good. And we talked about minimalism and life. 
Um, so it was good vibes there. We got to meet actually one of our community members who has been subscribed to us like since May of 2016 when I first put up the landing page for Black Minimalists. So that was so awesome to meet him and know that he's been rocking with us um, before we even officially launched. So that was cool. Then the next day we went to Spiritual Homegirls meetup. She had featured um, Kenya on her podcast to talk about what Black Minimalism is and to help us promote our course, Black and Minimalist, which you can also take if you're looking to start your minimalist journey. In the Black and Minimalist course, we talk about um, why Black minimalism exists and minimalism for Black liberation. We talk about values and we talk about making space for the things you want in your life. So if you're interested in that, a link to Black Minimalist will be in the description box. But yeah, so we got we actually got to meet um, one of the people who took our course. She also came to the meetup in Atlanta. So yeah, the next day we went to um, the Chattahoochee Nature Center in Atlanta and met up with Maria, a spiritual homegirl, kicked it with her. Um, one of Kenya's friends, Nina, she came from Tennessee, Nashville, I think. And we got to meet her and we were there at the Nature Center for the Butterfly Festival. Um, so it was a big exhibit set up where we could learn about butterflies and do like crafts and they had like a but butterfly habitat where you could go inside of an enclosed space and all the butterflies are flying about and uh, there's lots of flowers inside the space and you could hold a, like a sponge stick with nectar on it and the butterflies would come and land on it um you'll see it in the video but yeah so that was really cool, just being out in nature and kicking it and just meeting real cool people. After that, we went to Little Five Points in Atlanta, which is a cool, like, eclectic neighborhood. You know, hipsterish, definitely, but um, still cool vibes. We checked out a few of the stores there and um, had a good Indian dinner, Indian food dinner. Um, after that, we came back to Charleston. We went to the beach. We met up with another Black and Minimalist course member. We went to Fresh Future Farm. We volunteered there. Kenya is a consultant for them. So we went and did some volunteer work there, pulling some weeds up, got some fresh mint and lemongrass, which I made into a tea. And yeah, we just chilled out. The last thing that we did that was really important, though, is that um, we decluttered Kenya's house. Her apartment so that felt really good to help her you know work through some things and make space for the things she wanted so that was enjoyable and then I went to hang out with my sister in Norfolk and then I came back home so yeah after I got back home um, you know spiritually things just kept heating up and they're still heating up they're still going on um, I'm actually recording this video on the eve of the new moon and the partial solar uh, eclipse that's happening tonight. Um, but yeah, I'm in a group, a Facebook group of other black women who are on a similar spiritual journey, learning about you know our ancestral spiritual traditions um so i'm learning about um you know how to honor the ancestors properly learning about the history of african-american spiritual traditions so the african-american spiritual tradition um is called hoodoo so i'm learning about that um and just you know working on healing things and confronting things and dealing with relationships and things and um, you know trying to just step in my power and use that power for my own personal liberation and for the liberation of my people and also not only and I believe you know Obviously all the spiritual stuff is happening, but it's also like a very spiritually significant time just for the universe in general 
because of all of the astrological events happening so you know over the course of this year but definitely in this this summer in particular a lot of planets have been retrograding i believe at one point in time 10 planets will be in retrograde we may have already passed that point but i believe now currently there are about six planets in retrograde so that energy is definitely affecting um, me and people that i know um, retrogrades are times of reflection um, they're also times of decision so basically the universe is presenting us with um, our past and decisions we made in the past and it's asking us to reflect on those decisions and to determine if we've learned our lessons from our past actions and to determine if we are going to choose a different future um, if we're going to heal from those past actions or if we're going to continue to repeat the same cycles that will keep us stuck so you know that's the question for everybody right now um, that's the energy that's circulating so um, you know I don't believe that it's a coincidence that everything that has happened over the past year has been happening and I know that there are still things that are going to happen I think just in general 2018 is going to be a very spiritually significant year for many people including myself so yeah, I'm learning about that. I'm learning about tarot. I made my own tarot cards. Actually, I have them with me. Um, my friend texted me and she's not coming, so I'm gonna finish this video and then uh, I don't know. I guess I'll do whatever I was planning to do. But yeah, so I made my own tarot cards. They're collages or whatever um i'm working on digitizing them now i'm doing it myself um so i just took a picture with my camera not this is my phone but my um regular camera that i use i have used in the past to film um yeah so i've taken pictures of them and now i'm editing those pictures and then i'm designing them in canva but um yeah learning about all these different things it's been interesting but um deciding to learn about hoodoo was like a really significant step for me because um you know i have stated in the past that i would never join any type of religion and um i you know i used to be a christian in my teenage years but in college I decided that it wasn't for me um, and since then I haven't you know followed any religious tradition you know I just do my own thing I journal I pray um, and I try to act right but um, I'm definitely learning more about hoodoo and like what our ancestors did to help them survive the racist white supremacist country that we live in so it, it I think it appealed because I'm so um, you know passionate about liberation especially black liberation um, learning about hoodoo studying hoodoo is very important to to that liberation and I think our ancestors um, created this belief system for that purpose so that's what really intrigues me about it you know and really you know after many many years um, made me reconsider you know following a religion But hoodoo is a very, from my understanding of it currently, and I'm still, you know, new to learning about it, but it's very minimalist in the fact that it's about using what you have to connect to the spiritual realm. And part of the thing that you have that everybody has is ancestors. Like, you don't have to create any new um, gods or goddesses or, you know, you don't have to create anything new. 
um, the divine's already with you, within you, and you're already connected to your ancestors. So it's very minimalist in that sense. Also, just the way that they um, practice hoodoo. You know, they use what they had around them. They use herbs um, that they learned about for themselves, that they learned about from the Native Americans, indigenous peoples. Uh, they use herbs. They use everyday things that they already had. So and that's another reason why hoodoo is very appealing to me because I believe it is very minimalist. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to update you guys on. This video is already long. Mmm. <sighs> Black minimalists were making a little shift too. Everything is shifting. <laughs> Everything has shifted. Um, and if you want to read more about, you know, if you want to read more about my personal journey, you can definitely go to my website, yolandabafree.com. Um, I have been blogging pretty regularly for the past eight months. I started back up in January and I've been blogging regularly. So you can definitely read more about a lot of different things like. Um, changing my diet and my locks and traveling my goals intentions places where I've been featured um, yeah if you want to read more about that stuff just go to my blog yolandabafree.com but um, black minerals is shifting too we're moving into more of a sustainability thing phase one thing that we learned over the past year is that we haven't managed or run black minimals in the most sustainable way and being that we are you know a minimalist organization we had to really step back and reflect and figure out how to move black minimalists in a way that's most sustainable so that we continue we can continue helping people get free so that's a shift that will be upcoming um but yeah like i said i'm still minimalist um, I've become even more minimalist I feel like over the past year like with my hair especially when it comes to like my appearance too particularly with my hair um, and I guess I should do a separate video on minimalist beauty but another thing that I've stopped doing is like shaving regularly like I haven't used a razor in a while and that was definitely, a, it's definitely challenging because, you know, I've been shaving since I was like 12 years old. Um, because I thought that was what you're supposed to do and I wanted to fit in. But this year I just came to a point where it's like, mm -mm, I'm not trying to do that anymore. It just takes a lot of time and I'm always missing spots anyway. And this is the way my body is made. So why can't I accept it as it is? So yeah learning more about body positivity and leaning into that um yeah all right i'm gonna cut this video off because it's almost 40 minutes long and i i'm not trying to edit it so you're probably gonna get it straight like this but yeah more videos to come i just wanted to finally make this talking video and i had the time today and the weather is nice i'm about to go home Cause it's getting dark um so i'm probably just gonna go home and do my new moon rituals there and take a bath but yeah it was good talking to y'all good catching up and like i said more videos will be coming so you'll see more of what i've been up to and everything that i talked about in this video will probably make a little bit more sense but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.